So, Jason, we just landed at the island of Colchis. We, we, you were both here for that story, yeah? Colchis? <laughs> no, Mum wasn't. No. You weren't here for that? But she watched. Oh, she watched there the were room. adventures. Oh, because she's supportive. She loves me. So anyway, they did adventures and they landed their ship in Colchis and they picked up a couple of the sons of uh, Phrixus on the way. Now they have to get into the city. Apollonius of Rhodes, who's writing the main version of this, uh, the Argonautica, takes a weird little detour. It's like a, an interesting narrative device at this point, where suddenly we're hanging out with Hera and uh, Athena, who are discussing, oh no, how's Jason gonna go in and deal with Aedes, the paranoid king? How's this gonna work? Do you have a plan, Athena? Because I don't have a plan. I don't have a plan either, Hera. What should we do, is what they say. And then, <laughs> the bananas in pyjamas. Yes, exactly. Are you thinking what, Are I'm, you thinking thinking? what I'm thinking, B1? We need to talk to her. And he keeps referring to her for a little while. Her um, being Aphrodite. Oh, and they're like, oh, do we bring Aphrodite into this? I think we need to bring Aphrodite into this. And Athena's like, well, I mean, I don't get love. <laughs> but if you say it'll work, I believe you. Um, and so they head off to uh, Aphrodite's palace. They walk her in. Love shack. Her love shack. shack. <laughs> yeah, it's what, what's the beginning lyrics to the love shack? It's something about you going down the road. Highway or something. Yeah. Shannon will be able to tell you. Yeah. yeah. Damn it, Shannon. Where are you? So Hera and Athena, they both sort of trot on off to uh, Aphrodite's palace. Uh, which Hephaestus built for her, but he's not there because he's always out building stuff. And so it's just her, and Apollonius of Rhodes spends a weird amount of time focusing on how she's only halfway through her morning, like, hair routine. Like, she still has a golden comb in her hair for the conversation. It's not important, but he tells us that, like, four times, so I'm telling you. Maybe it's comic relief. Maybe her hair's sticking Maybe out at an amusing angle. And, and the things, because if she's come out of the seaboard water, her hair's going to be pretty stiff and strange anyway. That's true. Why has she been in seawater? Didn't she come in the shell? Yeah, but that was when she was born. Well, I feel like that's like a few hundred years since she's been in the ocean. <laughs> no, no, but sometimes it's hard to get ocean water it's out It's true. Here. It's very true. While they're there, Hera and Athena sort of sit down for a cuppa, and they're like, oh, Aphrodite, your house is so nice. Um, you haven't seen your son Eros around, have you? Anywhere? No? And Aphrodite sort of says, Hmm, it's interesting how you've never visited me ever in my entire life here, but now that you want something from my son, suddenly you come and you visit me and you bring up all these pleasantries. That's really interesting. And, uh, and Hera grabs her by the collar and starts shaking her and says, Listen here, we need Jason to succeed. I need Jason to succeed. And for that to happen, we're gonna need Medea to fall in love with Jason. Okay. Has there been any hint before that Hera was interested in Jason? She's literally the patron that sent him on this mission. Oh, okay. I thought it was the uncle that sent him on the mission. No, she's the one who uh, disguised herself as an old lady and like oh, put the, everything the, in the motion. Oh, going across the river and losing his shoe. Yes. Okay. Yeah, she, she just really desperately wants Jason to win and is very worried about this paranoid king. Um, and so she kind of demands that Aphrodite send Eros to make uh, Medea fall in love with Jason. But the trouble is, Aphrodite says, whoa, whoa, okay, I get it, but um, you'll know that Eros is like in his terrible teenage years and will not listen to me, right? Like he would respect you, queen of the gods, and you, a warrior goddess, a little more than me, his mum. Uh, but you know, I can try. I don't know whether he's mad at her because I don't know when the Eros and Psyche stuff happens. So it's possible that he's just being a little bit of a brat, but it's also possible that he's mad at his mum because she literally tortured his girlfriend. So like, in a way. So Aphrodite uh, wanders off to Olympus to find Eros. She finds him gambling with Ganymede, as in the kid that Zeus kidnapped in the form of an eagle to be his cupbearer because he was pretty. And Eros is just like taking him for all he's worth with this with this like, golden game? dice game. And kittens. And kittens? Yeah. You bet for kittens? Oh. <laughs> Ganymede's having a terrible time. Eros is having a great time. 
and Aphrodite promises to give Eros a fancy golden ball <laughs> that once belonged to Zeus if Eros does this one thing for her. A golden ball? Yeah, it's like... I just... Really? It's just, it's just like a ball, but it's gold and the stitching on it's real neat. <laughs> That's it. But Eros really wants that ball, so he does the job. Plan for it. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, so now we finally get back to the heroes. Jason and his team, or a, a crack squad of his team members. If he loses that, does he have to marry yeah. the frog? Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's what happens. Yeah, we get back to Jason. He's got his uh, his little crack squad together out of his, you know, ship crew of a thousand people. Um, and they try to wander into the city. Everyone's really worried that they're going to get caught out on the way. But Hera sends a mist before them and fills the city with confusion. But it lets them get to the door of the castle. So they the would confuse them. themselves. No, they just got there. They just went the right way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know, heroes just have an inborn sense of direction, I guess. But at the same time, uh, Eros uses the mist to kind of slip into the castle as well and poke around and see what's going on where Medea is. Um, now, Medea is a priestess of Hecate, who's the underworld goddess of magic. So she's like a proper sorcerer, and she usually spends every day just at the temple all the time. But on this day it was like raining, and so she had to stay home. Um, and so she's wandering around the castle when she runs into Jason and the sons of Phrixus, and whoever the other two people that came with them were, they weren't that important. Um, and so she's like freaking out because these two cousins slash nephews slash kind of brothers um, of hers that are the sons of Phrixus have appeared that they thought were dead because they've just been missing for ages and then when she freaks out then Colchaius, I think is her name, uh, who's the mother of the sons of Phrixus runs out to see if Medea is okay and she's like, oh my sons! and so they're welcomed into the castle because they had the sons of Phrixus with them so it's a good thing that one psychic, that one psychic told them to stop oh, yeah. the sons of Phrixus because that's why the paranoid king Aedes doesn't murder them so they stop and they have dinner for a little while and everything's kind of going well. Eros shoots Medea while she's looking at while she's <laughs> looking at Jason. Um, I thought the story had turned violent for <laughs> oh, a moment. Like well, I mean, it did, but <laughs> no, no. but love violence. Um, yeah, I don't know. He's shooting her with arrows. Like, yeah, she just doesn't die, but she gets all like sweaty and stuff. They have dinner, and Aedes is talking to Jason, and Jason's like, "Hey, we kind of came." that golden fleece it'd be really cool if you could give it to us and I he's freaked out he's like that's a lie you don't really want the golden fleece you want my kingship I know you do and uh, kind of hounds them for a little while and Jason's just trying to stay calm he's like eh, we just want the golden fleece and then we'll be on our way please 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 the king sort of thinks to himself how can I get rid of this guy without breaking the laws of hospitality as always because he's already invited them to sit at his table so if he kills them now there's gonna be trouble um, so what he does is he's like oh yes well, you know, I happen to have uh, in my possession, he, he basically spins this story about how he could never gift something so grand to someone who was his lesser. And so he says, every day I go and I yoke my fire-breathing bronze and bra brazen-hooved uh, bulls and I get them to plow the fields of Ares, and then I sow these dragon teeth seeds and fight the soldiers, the spartoid that spring up from the ground. Um, I do this every day. It starts in the morning, it ends in the evening. Every day I do this. Um, and everyone's like, sure, I do these. But he says, I do that every day, so if you can't do that tomorrow, then I guess you're not good enough for the golden fleece. And so Jason's like, oh, oh. <laughs> That's, uh, that's going to be difficult on the way out of the castle, because Jason's basically already given up. On the way out of the castle, one of the sons of Phrixus, Argus, so not Argus with all the eyes, but just Argus, he sort of says, hey, here's the thing, I reckon that we should talk to my mum about convincing her sister Medea, who's a super sorceress, to help you out, because if anyone knows a secret to getting this done, it's going to be her. And so they kind of go, oh, it's a little awkward to having to ask favors from your mum, but I guess we'll do it. And then there's this whole like weird tangent where Medea is pretending that she's doing it for uh, Colchaius and the Sons of Phrixus, 
but really she's like, oh my gosh, oh. Jason was thinking of me. Yeah. Oh, oh, it's so, it's so happy. And so, mm, what a cutie. So they have to go and they have to talk to Medea about stuff. And so they're heading off to um, the, the temple of Hecate to talk to her. She's been devising some kind of a spell and potion that could help save Jason in the meantime. She being Hecate or Medea? Medea. Okay. With the help of Hecate, I guess. Um, but yeah. And so Medea has had this sort of side quest where she harvests a plant. It's kind of like a crocus that grew up from where some of Prometheus's flesh and blood fell from the Caucasus Mountains while he's being eaten by, eaten by an eagle and it turned into a plant and it looks like a plant but if you get to the roots of it it's just like flesh and blood and stuff that's kind of sap blood but she like puts it in a seashell and makes it all pretty <laughs> Like blesses it and stuff, but then she has to do this thing where she like bathes it in a bunch of very specific rivers for a while. I don't know how she got all this done in one night, but she gets this all together. And then the next day, Jason is headed off to meet with her, and he brings Mopsus the Magnificent with him. And then a, it's a great name. It is a great name, and uh, and a crow makes fun of Mopsus. No, for his name. No, not for his name. For him, <laughs> he's like you can't even predict. How girls want to flirt with boys, how can you predict anything, is oh. the heckle. Oh. And, <laughs> and Mopsus smiles at the bird and goes, you know what, you're right, and sends Jason off by himself to the temple so they can get their flirt on him and Medea. It's getting shiny from this side, I should never use sunlight. So he goes and he talks to Medea and she's like, here, have this really gross ointment I made for you. It's um, a sort of a fire retardant lather. That he can. So, so is Prometheus fire retardant? A pap. In this story, Prometheus is the answer to every spell. Just every every I spell mean, that comes up is a little sun. bit of Prometheus sweat or Prometheus blood or. He did get a bit of the sun. So yeah, I mean, I guess. Fire retardants going on there. That's true. Um, but yeah, so <laughs> she makes that. I suppose when you watch those things of stuntmen running through fires or getting set on fire for movies, they have to get covered in like. Prometheus juice Gross. gel. Yeah. yeah, and I hate how that looks, but it works. So I'm just imagining that, but on Jason. So he kind of lathers himself up and he goes and he yokes the bulls. Um, and you know, there's like this whole thing about how they're so super strong that even without their fire breathing, being able to set him on fire, that they might just overpower him. But it doesn't seem to be a problem. He just kind of Probably this Prometheus, Prometheus juice gives other benefits. Yeah, well. I mean, it might do. It might do. Um, but they only last till the end of the day, so he's got to he's got to act quick. So he has to grab these bulls, yoke them, not get kicked by their bronze hooves, uh, and he he sort of takes them down, gets the gets the plow on them, and he starts plowing the field, the field of Ares. And as he goes, he's dropping in the dragon teeth that Aedes gave him, knowing full well that when the sun goes down, they're gonna spring up into freaking Spartoi Earth Warriors. But thankfully, once again, Medea knows her history because Cadmus fought the dragon that these teeth came from back in the day. I'm genuinely becoming like, I need to do this <laughs> just real quick. It's gonna get too dark later. But right now, I'm moon facing. I'm still a little moon facing, but you know what? We're living with it. Dragon, Cadmus, he fought that dragon. I have a video on it somewhere. Um, and he he had a bunch of teeth, and the gods were like, yo, you should plant those teeth. And Cadmus was like, sure, gods, I trust in you to be nice to me. And then a bunch of Sparta jumped up and he had to fight them. It was a whole thing. Um, but Thebes was founded, so that's nice. That's, that's good. A handy army right there. Right? And ten of those teeth were saved by Athena and given to Aedes at some stage. Goodness knows what for, but now Aedes is using them to get at Jason. Um, um, just wondering about the growth of these plant soldiers. Yes. Um, do they then, after the battle, go to seed so that they continue? Because how does... do ten seeds turn into like an everyday occurrence or is that like he was why yeah, he was just okay. yeah but also somehow the dragon of Ares look here we are the the dragon of Colchis is still there in this one 
There's some confusion about whether it's the same dragon that Cadmus killed or not the same dragon that Cadmus killed. I don't see how it could be the same dragon that Cadmus killed because Cadmus had to be a slave of Ares for like eight years for killing that dragon. Mm. And then he married Ares' daughter and then the two of them got turned into snakes. So beautiful. So mm. beautiful. He, he plants these seeds and then the sun goes down and his, his gross <laughs> uh, gel covered body is no longer powerful. And he's like, oh no, I gotta fight all these <laughs> Spartoi without my flame retarded super strength. Um, but, but Medea knows her history, she knows about the story of Cadmus and she says, here's what you have to do. You have to get them to fight each other. And the way that Cadmus did that was throwing a rock into the middle of them. So if you can make sure that you don't get seen by the Spartoi and you throw a rock into the middle of them, they're gonna think that one of the others threw the rock and they're gonna start fighting each other and they're all gonna kill each other you won't even have to worry about it. And so he just like pegs a rock <laughs> as the sun goes down and hides behind this big boulder for a little while like, this is fine, everything's fine. Um, and all the Spartoi kill each other uh, until there's like two of them left and Jason runs out and stabs him and goes, ha, that was me, I, I did that, I killed them real hard. Uh, well done me. <laughs> I forgot the bit where Medea is promised by Jason that, uh, that he will take her home with him. To oh. Greece and marry her. So romance. Which is exactly what she wants right now because she's been manipulated by love. Out! Out! Uh, <laughs> I keep swapping the voices. <laughs> Sorry. Out! Out! My skin! But now Aedes, who's been watching the whole thing, is very displeased that Jason has actually completed this impossible task that he set. And so he says, no, you can't have the fleece. And he storms up to the castle to talk about how they're going to fight all of the Argonauts to the death. Um, so in the meantime, Medea flees the castle in secret and she takes some of her magical stuff with her and she comes to the Argonauts and she says, we gotta get out and we gotta get out like now. And Jason's like, but I need the fleece. I've gotta take the golden fleece back with me. She's like, well, I'll show you where it is. We'll get the damn fleece, but we gotta go. And so she leads Jason to the sacred grove where the fleece is slung over that one branch of the tree, but it's also guarded by the sleepless dragon, the dragon of Colchis. And so Jason's like, uh, I, ooh, ah, I don't know what to do. And he's really freaked out. And Medea's like, starts singing <laughs> to the dragon and petting it like it's a cat and calling on, um, on Hypnos? I think it's the Sandman. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mr. Sandman, <laughs> bring me a dream. She's my mixed story in the dragon. <laughs> no one's ever seen. <laughs> You're so good with lyrics. I know. <laughs> I mean, who else would it be? Mr. Sandman, bring me a mm. dream. There is someone, there's someone I'm forgetting and it's gonna drive me crazy. Oh well. Uh, she calls on, I think it's Hypnos. She calls on Hypnos to put the dragon to sleep and it's working, it's getting all sluggish and stuff. But then still when Jason steps forward to take the golden fleece, the dragon's like, ah, and goes for him. And in one version, we, we know that there is a, a variant of the story in which Jason gets eaten because <laughs> there's just a, like a vase painting in which the dragon is disgorging him <laughs> after swallowing him. And it's like, hmm. This definitely happened at some point, but we don't have any written versions, so that's a shame. Some suggest that there are stories where Jason got eaten and had to cut his way out. Some suggest there are stories where Jason got eaten and Medea had to full on save him because he the was god eaten. Epicac kind. Epicac. Epicac. Hmm. Well, I mean, it's a it's a classic trope of of Greek mythology from the very beginning. That's how Zeus got all his siblings out. Hmm. So Medea has to spell the dragon to sleep she starts sprinkling bits of of more more prometheus bits like his sweat or something into its eyes and he falls asleep don't know what prometheus had to do with sleep but it works and so the dragon falls asleep and they take the fleece and they get the hell out of there but by now aedes and the other people in the palace at colchis have worked out what's happening and they're gonna try and catch the argonauts before they can flee and then i think medea and jason kill medea's brother <gasps> i but I don't remember. <laughs> so if there was anything interesting that happened with that, I'll tell you next was time. Was Medea's brother one of the two people that picked up on the trip? I don't think so. She calls them her brothers, but in name. There's also too much detail about how her sister breastfed her when she was little, because 
the age difference was so huge and she just had the Frixis son boys. Yeah. It's like, I didn't need to know. Mm. But it was in my head, so now it's in yours. I don't know whether anything interesting happened when they killed that guy and fled, but if so, I'll let you know. But Hercules was on the ship, manning it, ready to go and break the oars. No, he's gone already. Ah. He's gone. Remember, they left him oh, behind. His labors. I have a question. Yes. Did Eros win the golden ball? It doesn't say. So I... Part of me hopes he didn't get it. That's show sure. him. Petty, but probably. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, thank you for listening. So what do I say at the end of videos? You say something about your grandmother. Yeah, email this to your grandma, I guess. Myths are good.